um, asking the question, uh, are you saved? Today we're going to be testing ourselves, and we're going to be looking at um, um, ways of doing that, um, because um, it's the most important question you can ask, and it is one that you should be um, asking often of yourself. Because we live in a wicked world, and we're affected by it whether we know it or not. But um, let's uh, let's open in prayer. Holy Father, we pray for wisdom today. We pray for guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We need you. Without you, we can do nothing. And we ask for encouragement today with this text. We pray for assurance. And Lord, I pray that anything that I say that's wrong would fall on the floor and be forgotten. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would guide me as we go through this material today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Now before we get started, I wanted to mention, uh, if it, any of you that knew Walter Turner, he was our he was our interim pastor before Jason came. And how long did he, was he with us? Almost a year. Yeah, and so, um, and you know, um, Russ, um, they, they knew, knew him very well. He stayed with them uh, several times uh, because he, he came all the way from uh, up near around Cartersville, I think is where he was coming from every day, every Sunday morning, uh, or he'd come down Saturday night and stay with Russ and his family. And um, um, he really went the extra mile for us during that time. Um, and he also had um, kind of, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it wasn't without issues. And he dealt with them, and uh, I think he did it gracefully. But, uh, you know, this past week we just heard that he had COVID and then that he was in the hospital. And then just yesterday we got an email that he'd passed away. Uh, and uh, his wife Margaret also has COVID and I think she's not doing well I think she's in the hospital now too so uh, um, we do want to pray for them uh, pray for his family um, the encouraging thing is uh, is that uh, he's with the Lord now and um, that's good news for him and it is encouraging for us for the future but you know, of course, his family is without their uh, their loved ones. So, and also, they're still battling with that problem with uh, COVID with uh, Margaret. So, we want to pray for them. And also, um, before we get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about our current situation. So, we're in a transition period now again, and um, the church still is functioning. So, it, the 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 uh, sheep, you know, the the, uh, the members still have needs, and um, the elders are concerned about the spiritual health of the of the flock, and so that's going to be on our mind. And um, this, what's happening now is is God's providence, and so uh, I actually think it's a good thing, and. Um, the, the pastor that we get um, must be a blessing to this church. And um, so we, we, we must be praying for that to get the, the right man in here. Um, but until then, we are still a church and we are still going to worship the Lord and we're still going to um, um, come together and, and learn and fellowship and uh, continue on just like we always have, and look for a, um, a better situation going forward. 
again, our, the elders are, are concerned about your spiritual health and the, the stuff we're going to be talking about today. Um, I want it to be encouraging to you because everyone here, I, I, I believe, is a believer, but um, um, the Lord is the one who knows for sure, and you yourself can be sure. You yourself can be assured. And what, the things I'm going to be talking about today, I, I want you to, to hear these things and, and know that, um, that with um, these attributes, you can be assured of your salvation. Now, I can't be assured of your salvation, but you can because you know your, yourself. And if the Spirit is living in you, uh, the Spirit is going to be um, assuring you, too. That's one of the things that the Spirit does. So let's get started. Um, oh, I don't have a Bible. <laughs> I didn't bring my Bible. Uh, I need a Bible. Thanks, I'll use Russ's. I'll read it loud so you can hear it. I was uh, so concerned about trying to print out this document that I didn't, didn't pick anything. Oh, and I, can't, I don't know where my Bible is at the house right now anyway. Packed in a box somewhere. Okay, so we're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. My phone. Sorry, I gotta get my phone. So, um, Russ, I'm going to give this back to you because this is too much to handle on this little podium up here. I got, I'm going to use my phone. Thank you. Yeah, we're too small. I need a telescope to read those words. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 5, let's pray first. Holy Father, we, we want to um, ask you to, again, um, be with us as we read your word and open our eyes, Lord. And um, again, we're asking for, for the believer, we're asking for encouragement. And for the one who's not a believer, we ask for concern and obviously the desire Seek out help if there is a problem with any of these things that we discussed today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves, or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. Test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. This relationship that a believer has with the Lord was entered into at some time in your past, but it's not something that you um, that you don't continue to work on. Like you guys who are in here who are married, um, when you got married. What did you do? You moved in with each other, right? Your life changed because you were, you, were, um, you were married and you became husband and wife. You became one. And you didn't just continue on with your life the way you were before. You, you became married and you started a relationship with each other. And that was a big change. The same way it is with the Lord. You didn't just say a prayer one time when you were saved and um, went about your life as you did before. That's not the way it works. The sinner's prayer, you've heard that before. Maybe a lot of you have said it before. I think I did when I was younger. But that's not what saves you. Um, uh, you, don't, you don't invite Jesus into your heart. That's not the way it works. Let's continue on. 
So test yourselves. How do we test ourselves? What do we, what do we use to test ourselves? What's the best thing to use to test yourself? The Word of God, right? The Bible. The truth. And your salvation is the most important thing you could ever, ever have. So testing it is, um, uh, um, you want to be assured of your salvation. How many of y'all have climbed a ladder in here before? What happens when you put a ladder up? You just start running up it? You test it to make sure that, you know, you want all four of those points to be, ta- uh, you know, connecting to something before you start climbing that ladder. It's the same way with your salvation, because you're depending on it for your future security. And we're not talking about breaking a leg either, we're talking about eternity, eternity. Again, we are surrounded by wickedness in this world. The media, the government, even the medical industry, Sports, uh, entertainment, whether we know it or not, we're being affected by all this. And um, the um, question of salvation is um, first and foremost in our, uh, it should be first and foremost in our minds. So the Bible tells us that God is light. God is light. What does that mean? Can, can, can somebody, let's just talk about this. God is light. What does that mean? Light. God is light. Holy and pure, yep. Yes. Right. Illuminating. Right. Bless. Right. Opposite of darkness, exactly. Mm hmm. That's one of the things uh, this world needs to know most, uh, uh, and Christians today. Debbie? Right, yeah. Yeah. So, God is light. Um, it means he's holy. It's the opposite of darkness. What does light do for us? The light of God, what does it do for us? It, it, well, I want you to know this. It reveals unholiness. When we come to the Father, um, one of the things we realize is how holy he is. When you become a believer, you realize how holy he is and how unrighteous you are. And that drives you to, to need um, to be forgiven for your sins. Because, um, and we've talked about this before, everybody that walked this earth besides Jesus has had the same problem, and that is the problem with sin. And sin that separates us from the Father, the wages of sin are death, and when you've sinned, you, you are, um, uh, before you're saved, you, you, your sin didn't bother you much. But when you come to the Father and, get, and repent of your sins, when you realize how holy he is and how sinful you are, and you repent of your sins and you believe that you're forgiven, that's a wonderful thing. But it doesn't stop there. Your life is a continual uh, because you know that you don't stop sinning. You, you may change what you're, you've been doing. You, you change your life. Uh, maybe you stop drinking or maybe you stop um, 
I don't know, having a girlfriend on the side, whatever. But uh, you, you never become perfect. You're not going to become perfect until the last day, right? Um, and so you're, you're continually having to go back to the Lord for repentance throughout your whole life. And that's one of the things, I, the, and the, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, now we're going to go through uh, um, some tests that you can um, test your, your, um, yourself with. One of, it, one of the tests is the Spirit's testimony. And I'm going to read Romans 8, chapter 16, verses 12 through uh, 17. Romans chapter 8, 12 through 17. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellows with, uh, fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. Look at this again, uh, verse 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Have you ever read, you all, all have read the Bible and you've all read verses many times, um, the same verse many times. Have you ever had one just come alive for you? That you, you've read it many times, then you read it, then you read it and somehow it, it comes to life to you and it, you see the meaning of it that you'd never seen before? Has that ever happened to you? That's the spirit doing that, and um, so I'm trying to explain how the the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. Um, that's that is a, an indication that the spirit is at work in you. Um, but one of the other things that um, is the spirit bearing testimony to you is conviction of sin. So. You have, a, you have a person that um, is an unbeliever, and one of the things that he's, he does in his life is, uh, I guess say drugs. Maybe this guy's addicted to drugs. So he becomes a Christian, a believer, and he, um, he stops doing drugs. Um, but uh, he's a new Christian. He's learning about it. He's growing in his, his uh, sanctification. Um, like we said just earlier, he still ha there is still sin in his life. So one of the tests that you have as you're living your life is that sin that you commit, you are convicted of. It's just an, it's just an ongoing thing. You know that. It's going to be ongoing until uh, the end. Um, uh, ideally, and... Hopefully, you're growing in your sanctification, so, and it's not a, a straight line. You're, you're going to have good days, bad days, good months, bad months. But um, as you uh, are made aware of sin through the Holy Spirit, um, you will go to Jesus. That's what, that's what the Spirit does. That, con that uh, being convicted of sin is a... Uh, a testimony that uh, the spirit is bearing witness to your spirit. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. And then back to Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 14. For all are led by the spirit of God, for all who are led by the spirit of God, that is, are being convicted of sin and repent, are sons of God. Verse 13, if you are living according to the flesh, that is, you say to yourself, I'm not sinning, I'm doing fine. 
you will die. But if by the Spirit, being convicted of sin and repenting, you will put to death the deeds of the body and you will live. Is that encouraging to y'all? Because aren't y'all convicted of sin from time to time? None of us are perfect, but um, um, may, and some people are maybe convicted of sin more than others. I think I'm probably the worst one in here. They'll go to sleep on me. Yeah, well, I, I, I joke, but it's not so much a joke. Um, I'm sorry? Yeah, well, yeah, I was going to say, you know, Paul said that he was the chief sinner, right? He claims to be the chief sinner, but that's because I wasn't born yet. As soon as I was born, he lost that title. Read it, please. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. That's true. Okay, so that was um, test number one, the Spirit's testimony. How about test number two, desiring God? The goal of heaven is not to avoid hell, but to be with God. That's the goal of heaven. The goal of heaven is not to see, you know, grandma and grandpa. The goal of heaven is not to um, have 72 virgins. The goal of heaven is to be with God. Listen to Psalm chapter 73, verse 25. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Remember the Westminster Confession of Faith, uh, the first uh, question is what is the chief end of man? Anybody remember that one? To glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's heaven. <clears throat> it's a benefit, I think. Yeah, it's a benefit of heaven. Yeah. And I think it's encouraging for believers, though, because not to escape hell, but um, believers have to deal with um, persecution and unrighteousness. Um, you know, when, when we sin, we repent, and there are consequences to sin, too, and we deal with it, and we have to deal with those, too. Um, but um, for us, we're forgiven. Um, we see these rich people that are... that. Um, um, that control the world, you know, I mean, you know, to a certain degree. Um, the they, politicians who are um, um, dead set against, um, I mean, the, the only reason they're there is for their own um, benefit, you know, in, in office. Um, we see all kinds of corruption, and um, they're not believers, um, and it's encouraging to us to know that they're not paying for their sins now. They're, they're doing fine, but they will in the future. Unless they repent. We want them to repent. I mean, that's our, that's, we really want them to repent. But there is a hell, and those who are um, uh, always going to reject grace are going there. And um, uh, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Um, but it's, it's not the believer's reason for wanting to go to heaven, though. Hell. That's not the reason for, um, for that at all. So desiring God, do you desire God? What does it mean to desire God? Again, uh, when you got married, your life changed. You started a relationship with someone, and um, you became one. And um, 
um, like you, you guys who are married, do you talk to your spouse? Talk to them. Spend time with them. Maybe not all, not always, right? I mean, it's not like uh, you don't have a, nobody has a perfect relationship, but huh? Well, yeah. You, you, hey, you mean that's that's some kind that's contact, right? <laughs> Yeah, so there's a relationship, and you, you talk with each other. Um, a believer is going to have a prayer life. And, uh, and again, um, some have more prayer lives than others. Uh, you also, like I t- said earlier, you go through times of dullness and, and brightness. It's, uh, uh, we're dealing with, uh, you know, we're living in the flesh now, and it's, it's, we're weak. We're very weak. But a believer is going to have a prayer life. And it's not always, you know, asking for things either. It's sometimes you just want to talk to them. And have you ever had a cold glass of milk in the summertime and you drink it and you just think, Lord, thank you for this milk. You know, something like that. Thanking him. Because it comes from him. You know, these blessings come from the Lord. So we thank him all the time. You also want to be in his word, too. Um, that the Bible is the word of God. And it's available to us so easily right now I mean, in this country. You know, we, how many, I've got so many Bibles. I can't find any of them but at the house, but I've got so many Bibles. And um, um, we should be reading it. And again, I want to keep stressing this. Um, you're not saved because you read the Bible. You're not, you're not saved because you read the Bible every day. That's not what saves you. But if you are saved, you will want to read the Bible. You'll, you'll want to be in the Word of God. It's just you won't be able to help it. You'll desire to spend time with them. Yeah, so being a Christian isn't just one prayer and done. It's a lifelong relationship just like marriage. And, um, and once you become a Christian... Um, the, the rest of the world starts to become dull to you. Uh, have y'all noticed that? Like, um, and it, it's not just me getting old either. I think it's it's truly um, the 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 light of the world is is uh, is the Lord, not material things, and not vacations, and not uh, you know stuff that I that I like doing. It just doesn't have any. Um, doesn't have the same draw that 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 it did when I, before I was saved. You've heard the 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 uh, verse, um, "Things of the world grow dim," right? Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And we're in this in the flesh. We're in that between stage, because we haven't reached the fullness of the kingdom, and so we're we're living in this in our weak bodies. Um, we know the truth. The Spirit is in us. That's a good thing, but we're never we we haven't experienced the fullness of the kingdom yet. And the fullness of the kingdom is that full uh, perfection that that I can't even explain to you. You know, you just. It's just one of those things you've got to believe. You know, somebody told me before we had children that they, they tried to tell me how much I was going to love my kids, and I believed them. But until I had kids, I didn't, I didn't uh, when I had kids, then it, you know, it, the light went out, or went off in my head. Oh, that's what they meant. When I experienced that, the same with, and I've heard the same about grandchildren, this even more with grandchildren. So, um, you know, I've, I totally believe it, but I haven't experienced that yet. That's the same way with the fullness of the kingdom. Um, we don't even know. We, we believe it, but we don't even know, you know. We have no concept of what it's going to be like. To be with God and to not sin again, that's going to be a cool thing, to never sin again. So desire God, desiring God, that's another test. And here's a big one. I mean, they're all big, and, and this list I'm going through isn't the full list. Um, but number three is trusting Jesus. 
So there are many, many people who profess to be Christians that are not. And I don't want to dwell on that, but it's true. Um, I don't know if there's any in this room or not, but um, listen to this, Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And you know what Jesus said to him after that? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And where was he sending them? These are people who profess to be Christians. They're casting demons out, doing mighty works in his name, and he's sending them south. What was that person appealing to when, when he said, Lord, Lord? He was appealing to his works, wasn't he? He was appealing to his good works. They were good works. But what does Paul say about his works? They're as filthy rags. So works uh, will not, as you know, will not get you into heaven. Jesus will get you into heaven. He was appealing to his, his works. He was appealing to his self-righteousness. He was trusting himself, and he was oblivious to the fact that, um, that he was doing that. Paul says in Titus chapter 1, verse 10, For there are many who refuse to obey. This is especially true among those who say that all Christians must obey the Jewish laws. But this is foolish talk. It binds people. It blinds people to the truth. And what's the truth? About works. They won't save you. The truth is that only the blood of Christ will save you. When you add anything to Jesus, your guilt is still there. When you add anything to Jesus, your profession is empty. No, no. Yeah. Well, here's what Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's another part of the the this further down we're going to be talking about um, about that kind of thing, but right now this this test is trusting Jesus, and with respect to works, um, you remember the Jews asked Jesus what they must what must they be doing to be doing the works of God, and what did Jesus say? He says, uh, this is the work of God, to believe in him whom he has sent. That's what Jesus said to the people who wanted to know what they could be doing to be doing the works of God. Yeah, and it's to honor him, not to earn or maintain your salvation. Exactly. Right? No. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Mm hmm. Exactly right. Yep. That's right. So that's the spirit. That's the spirit working in you to, to cause you to desire to do things out of honor and, and uh, thanksgiving. Um, certainly not to. Uh... Now, again, um, you know, um, like I said earlier, um, works don't save you and they don't maintain your salvation either. So um, 
we, we constantly have, th this is another good reason why we should be um, testing ourselves, is to make sure we're not doing works to maintain our salvation. We want to make, we want to make sure we're doing these works out of honor to God and thanksgiving, and that's, and that's it. Because uh, we know what they're worth. Paul says they're filthy rags. So our works, uh, and, and they, they may, be do, may be doing great work. Um, the main work, uh, the only work that uh, is of any value for your salvation is the work that Jesus did on the cross. And the works that you do to honor God um, help his church, uh, help those see what a believer does, um, cause them to desire to be Christians as well. All that is a benefit of doing works, um, but it's, you know, it's external to your salvation. So that's trusting Jesus. The, another test that you need to keep applying uh, is, am I trusting just Jesus for my salvation and not my, any of my works? Okay? Yes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Trust Jesus for your salvation. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to keep talking. Keep, this comes up all the time, but here's another test for you. A true believer confesses their sin and grows in repentance. Again, that's not a one-time thing. As we walk with the Lord, we confess our sins. We have been justified by, cross, uh, by Christ and adopted into his family. However, sin can hinder our relationship with the Lord. Right? So, you know, um, we talked about the guy who was a drug addict before and he, he got saved and stopped doing drugs. But his life began uh, anew and his walk with the Lord eventually would bring up something else that the Lord is, is, not, is not happy about or that is a rebellious thing that he had grace for. But now it's, it's come to, to his heart. The, the Holy Spirit has convicted him, and um, that has to be dealt with. Um, I personally, one of the things I have problems with is, is my temper. And um, it, it tends, I tend to have problems with my temper when I do something that I don't usually do. So it's a, it's a, a new thing that I'm doing, and um, it doesn't go my way, you know, like, like drywall. Um, oh, wow, that stuff is hard to do. But um, when I'm doing something that I don't do all the time and I'm, and I'm challenged constantly, I lose my temper. And um, I don't, I don't, cuss out loud, but I will inside. And the Lord hears it. And so I, I just confess to you guys that I've been dealing with that <laughs> past 40 days. Um, but um, 40 days. Uh, no, it just has to be 40 days. Because tomorrow's going to be 41, and I'll probably still have problems. But when I do that, I have to stop, and, and I apologize to the Lord. And sometimes I do that out loud. <laughs> but it's a daily thing, and it's part of that, that relationship. Um, and again, you know, we're, we're, it's not a straight line. It's you have good days and bad days, good months and bad months. But... Um, you're still in there with him, you know, and he's with there with you. And when you go to him, he hears you, and he's faithful to forgive. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 9. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? Who can say that? Nobody. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. 
John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You guys remember the, in the Old Testament, um, what were the children of Israel doing with the temple all the time? It involves animals. Sacrifices. Why did they have to keep doing it all the time? Yep, they, still, they had to atone for their sins. I mean, there's different sacrifices, but uh, the, um, the one that continually is, <coughs> excuse me, is atonement for sin. <coughs> um, now, they didn't have Jesus back then. Um, um, the same is true with us. Our sacrifice is Jesus, though. And when we repent of our sins, we're claiming that sacrifice again not to happen again, it happened once, and we're claiming um, the, uh, the payment of our sin uh, with that sacrifice. And he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right, so that test is called again, a true believer confesses their sin and grows in repentance. Now, you guys have known, you know, as you get older, um, especially in your faith, you realize how bad you really are, right? Start learning more. And I've said that this in here before. Um, jealousy and, and uh, um, bitter jealousy and, and selfish ambition. You realize how selfish you are. And I'm not trying to be negative to you guys. I mean, you, you, everybody is, has got you know, issues with, um, um, with these things that they, that they didn't really think about before. But as you grow in, in righteousness, um, the smallest thing starts becoming, you know, big to you. And you realize um, uh, the, the sacrifice that Jesus made uh, is, for me is growing every day. Um, I realize what he did for me is, um, gets bigger and bigger every day. And it's because, you know, I'm in the flesh and... Uh, um, until we're made perfect, we will be ever increasing in our knowledge of our imperfection and ever great, more grateful to Christ who paid for us, paid for our sins and is working to make us perfect. And we will be there eventually because of him. All right, so uh, number five. This is really just like the last one, a greater sense of your sinfulness and need for Christ. Some of the, um, some of the, the big, um, the great men of God from the past, uh, Paul, Peter, and Charles Spurgeon, they all had in common that um, the revelation of their sinfulness and a great need for Christ. Like I was saying earlier, the the, the uh, knowledge of um, of my sinfulness and the, the how it um, the growing um, understanding of my great need for Christ makes His blood much more precious to me. So as I as I grow in my realization of how evil I am, He grows in His righteousness and the preciousness of His blood. <clears throat> Romans chapter 7, verses 23, 4 to through 25, Paul says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself, with the mind I myself, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And back to 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in light, light is, that is, the revealing, God revealing our sinfulness to us, convicting us of sin. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ, his son, purifies us from all sin. So, no, the test is a greater sense of your sinfulness and need for Christ. And here's, here's what we were talking about earlier, the works. Believers will bear good fruit. Here's another test for you. Believers will bear good fruit. 
though there are many people who claim to be Christian that exhibit nothing but bad fruit. They act and talk like the world. Their lifestyle does not align with Scripture. They talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. <clears throat> they have no victory over sin, and this is strong evidence they are, that they are not saved. So Christians will grow and produce good fruit. And again, <clears throat> we're not talking about sinless perfection, right? You, wanna, you understand that. But we're talking about you know, the, your your whole life, your, your entirety. So if you, if you saw me hanging drywall and, and you saw me, you know, screw a screw in too far and it makes a big dent in the drywall, you might not think I'm a Christian. But if you think, if you look at the whole day, maybe, if you look at the, the full day or my, my, my life in general, um, then the um, conclusion should be, that, uh, that this guy's different from the world. A true believer will grow. A true believer will make progress. Some grow faster than others, right? And, um, you know, you want to be careful not to compare yourself to, you know, like Alan Hawkins or somebody like that, or, or you know, you don't want to compare yourself to, to another believer because you're going to come up short. Or... You might come up thinking you're better. You don't want that either, do you? It's not. It's not about comparing yourself to others. It's about. Um, it's about growing and producing fruit, and uh, the Spirit allows you to do that. Not your will, not your desire to be better than Joe over here, uh, or not to be worse than Sam over there, right? And the one who allows you to do that. Listen to this: John chapter 15, verses five through eight. I am the vine, <clears throat> you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So how about that line there? If you abide in me and, your words, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. What do you think about that one? Yeah, you know, we're not talking about, you know, getting rich or anything, right? We're talking about work. So you want, you want to do good for the Lord and you want to produce fruit. So I've been convicted by fruit before. I hear about this fruit <clears throat> and I look at myself and I don't really see any fruit. Am I really producing fruit? So what do I do? I go to the Lord and ask him to help me bear fruit. That's what, we're, that's what he's talking about. And it will be done for you. Ask what you, what, whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Right? So I think that's really talking about uh, bearing fruit for the Lord and uh, being convicted uh, or, or maybe not convicted but want to honor him and to just out of thanksgiving, serve him. Ask him what to, uh, ask him what you're wanting to, to do, and uh, um, he's uh, he's the one that provides the ability and the strength to do that, and the then the wisdom. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. Right, so believers will bear good fruit. Number seven, here's another test. God disciplines his children like any loving father would. Discipline. What time is it? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, all right, so we need to, we need to drop here. Um, I just had a few more anyway. So let me read this last part <clears throat> to, to, to encourage you. Um, is God teaching you? Are you broken over sin? Do you see him working in your life? Do you have a new relationship with sin? Have you separated from the ways of the world? Does the Holy Spirit convict you of sin? Do you want to do more for Christ? Do you see your great need for Christ? 
Do you put your trust in Christ alone apart from your works? Are you growing in repentance? Are you growing in your love for God? Do you desire to have fellowship with him and his people? Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you so much for this this day, and and thank you for the um, encouragement that you give us through your word. Um, Lord, you want us to be assured. You want us to be... You want us to be saved because you went, you went so far to make it possible. So, Lord, cause us to, uh, to test ourselves. And, Lord, encourage us. And those who feel they may have failed the test, Lord, let them come and talk to an elder or a mature Christian that they know and uh, work this out. Uh, we, we are very interested in their spiritual uh, well-being, Lord. And, Lord, we ask that you would be with Alan in the sermon today, that his words would be your words. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you.